not asking you to apologize for anything you did. I know you weren't directly responsible for the things that happened to my family. I know that your bloodline might not have even been directly related to it. But my father believed that one day, somebody in the body of Christ would take identificational responsibility and do some identificational repentance and say, I'm sorry that the church allowed that to happen to you. I don't believe that you're a partial man. I don't believe that you're like an animal. I don't believe that it's right for us to have twisted scripture and used it to keep you down. And I recognize that the Bible says that once we know Christ, we should know no man after the flesh. And so it's not right for us to even see your color before we see the content of your character. And so I'm asking you not to apologize to me, but to apologize to the slaves that came here as indentured servants and then had their contracts changed. I'm asking you to apologize to those that flowed through sharecropping and were working but didn't know that the system was fixed to stop them. I'm asking you to apologize to those that came here looking for a better place but then were forced to live in governmental projects even though they, even though they could afford more. I'm asking you to apologize to them in the best way you know how. Can I have oh, my black brothers and sisters, and my white brothers and sisters, Paul? I don't know how to do this, but stay, stay with me. We're gonna, we're gonna apologize. Don't know how to do this. But I, I want to apologize for enjoying and living in a system that benefits from the poverty of others. I ask your forgiveness for being a part of a system and not really even thinking about it. And not even caring about it. I, I've been wrestling in my own soul. That why haven't I borne the burden of it? And I ask your forgiveness. I ask your forgiveness. I want my brothers, my African American, come over here, come over here. ask your forgiveness to be a part of being a part of a of a white church who held you as slaves and thought it was godly who they really didn't think it was godly they just made excuses and dulled their consciences ask your forgiveness for the shedding of the innocent blood of our forefathers to you we ask I ask your forgiveness for the sterilization of your of your girls. I should forgive for for the racism of abortion and killing your babies. I ask your forgiveness with my brothers and sisters. I don't even know how to do this. Lord, I don't know how to do this, but God, please do something here tonight. Do something here tonight that shatters this wall and heals us. Like Daniel, we ask forgiveness of our father's sins. Father, for our racism, God. God, for our living in... Forgiveness. I actually asked, I actually called, emailed a brother. And I wrote a letter in 2008, and I com I called the bl the black the blacks that they can't vote for anyone. That's for the shedding of innocent blood. I felt like when I came here, the Lord began to show me that I was not casting the beam out of my own eye first, but now to get the speck out because I didn't. Because I didn't know what you went through and I hadn't walked in your shoes and the Lord showed us you can't deal with abortion unless you walk in the sandals of the trail of tears of the native peoples and you walk in the pain of the black Americans. 
and I don't know how to do it, but I called him, I just emailed him, and I asked forgiveness for my hard-hearted prophetic ministry that didn't recognize that I hadn't yet learned the right or earned the right to speak. I ask your forgiveness. Bishop, one of the ways I as a white believer, a white minister, a white leader in Metro Detroit, one of the ways that I show you my brother with maybe another skin color but inwardly we are the the real spiritual Jews in our land the true one man in Christ part of the family of God the one way I can show you repentance and show you forgiveness as as a white suburban pastor to merge with my African American believers to cross the city and the suburbs with my love, with the love of the white man and break the stronghold that separates the black and white church, that I will demonstrate the love of God with my life and with my obedience as a white minister, as a Russo, and as a man of God. Me and my church, me and my family will break the cultural lines of streets of cities of suburb and city and we will reconcile my suburban pastors to the to the african-american church and we will break the gap that separates that we will see the commanded blessing on our city in the name of jesus my minister friends my minister my minister suburban friends like tony ria my minister friends like phil chris my minister friends like Brother Crisco and the other white pastors of Suburban give our hearts to the, to the city of Detroit that we will mend the fences, we will merge as the church and we will see the greatest breakthrough that this city's ever, ever witnessed in the history of its, of its, of its founding. In Jesus' name. I want to ask forgiveness. And I think we should all, to your 93-year-old dad, all that happened to him and we want to say he's a hero and I ask forgiveness if your dad's watching forgive us for what we did to your dad and thousands of dads ripping off dads separating him ask forgiveness Jay I want to just stand in the gap on behalf of the Asians that come into the inner city and bought the stores and the liquor stores and the shops and grocery stores, many of them Korean, like myself, and, uh, you know, we would buy the stores, make the money from the neighborhood, but not so back into the neighborhood. We wouldn't hire the people who were of the neighborhood. We would just hire people of our own color, and then we would get rich, move to the suburbs, and drive the Mercedes Benz, and, and we were taking money, but we weren't giving back. And so in 91, when the riots took place in Los Angeles, when Ronnie King was beaten, the tension was so, so unbearable that the, the, the riots took place in Koreatown. It wasn't against the whites, it was against Koreans because the tension had been building for years. And so I want to just ask on behalf of the Korean Americans and the other Asians who have come into South Central and downtown Detroit and places in major cities, metropolitan cities around the United States where we have taken from the African American community but not so back into the African American community. We forgive us, and we want to repent. And I want to represent all the Asian pastors, the Korean pastors here, saying we will change, we will sow, we want to bless you as our brother and our sister in Christ, and we want to just come together as one new man in Jesus. with our greed the slavery share copy 
trickery, treachery. The white woman, we were very complicit. Industrial slavery. We destroyed the city you love. The greed. I'm so sorry. It's wrong. Racism is wrong. What happened to your family is wrong. It's sin. At the bottom of my heart. Please forgive. I want to ask you to forgive us as a white man that never thought I had any racism in my heart. But I went to a good school and it didn't bother me that the guys on the other side of town didn't go to a good school. It never crossed my mind. The smugness, the indifference, the happy confidence that I was free from racism. When my brothers on the other end of town were being so mistreated by the system that my fathers put into place. And I thought I was free and I thought I love black people. And I was so deceived, and I did not grasp that my happy indifference was contributing to the whole system. And I ask you to forgive me. And I'd like to know your father's name. JT, James Thomas, James Thomas, forgive us, forgive me. James Thomas, thank you for the way you trained your, your children. Thank you for the way you love Jesus. James Thomas, thank you. We love you, James Thomas. And I want to just say one thing. I want the, the brothers, if we'll just kneel down. And bishops, we need your insight. We need the anointing on your life. We need your leadership. We need you to love us. We can't get past this ceiling until we understand what God has put in you. We can't go forward. We need you. Would you pray for us? Every lyncher, every murderer, every rapist, every abortionist, we forgive. And we forgive those preachers who have taught division and evil and diabolicness of self-righteousness and have called America to suffer from the righteousness of God. Father, we forgive every perverted preacher that preaches racism, yeah. have preached it and is preaching it. We forgive them. <laughs> it's in this city that racism has raised and reigned. But tonight, we've heard a confession. We receive it. We heard the love of God expressed to us. 
And Father God, because of the love of God on the inside of us, we forgive. And oh, that blood that you shed at Calvary, it, it washes tonight. It cleanses tonight. Racism is dead. Racism is dead. We speak death to racism. And we speak life to love. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And we are free to love. Free to love. Because it's all about you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that your word says that the greatest commandment that there is is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul. And the second commandment is as the first. And that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Tonight we say that we forgive. We say, Lord God, that we thank you tonight. That your spirit is all over this place. And by the confession of our mouths and the words that have went out of the hearts of our dear brothers. And our dear sisters, and even across all of this auditorium, and across those that are watching throughout this world, that the spirit of racism is destroyed. In the name of Yeshua, the mighty God of Israel, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess in the name of Jesus. Racism is bowing tonight and is confessing that Jesus is Lord and is the glory of God. And love prevails in this place tonight. And Father, we thank you that out of the city of Detroit, that love and forgiveness is flowing in the name of Thank you. Now, Father, we cleanse the land. We purge the land of this foul spirit, the stench of it, the after effects of it. And, Father, we cancel the spirit of anger that many blacks have carried as a result of this. We cancel the spirit of distrust. We don't trust the white man. We cancel that. This is the dawning of a new day. We purge the body of Christ of distrust, of suspicion, cynical mindsets. We purge the body as of today. We are one new lump as of today. We're one new man as of today. It's the dawning of a fresh anointing that destroys the yoke and lifts the burden in Jesus' name. pray right now but I also want to say something the principle the Holy Spirit gave to my father was that there was repentance and then there was forgiveness and then there was forging new relationships because it says that good and blessed is it when brethren dwell together and you have to know each other as brethren when Lou and I met a number of months ago we began to talk about this event and he began to share with me what the Lord had given him I had not ever given much time of praying through this issue and I committed to him that I would fast and pray for seven days and ask the Lord what it was going to take to turn racism in the city of Detroit the Holy Spirit told me that he was looking for 400 pastors 400 that would meet together periodically and pray and seek God and simply be led by the Spirit of God on how we could really create a brother in society here in Metro Detroit Lou sought the Lord and many of his team. Please don't stop playing. 
Lou sought the Lord and his team, and they said, we only need 40 or 44 to fast for this event. So we ended up with the 44, 44 pastors from this area who fasted and prayed for 44 days that the Lord would bring a reconciliation in this city. If you give the Lord a hand clap for that. Dominic, is it okay if we put the covenant on your website also? Can we do that? We've got, we've got about 400 or 500 forms here, and it's just something for pastors, church leaders to fill out with your name, your church name, and just an email so that we can get together with you, send you some information so that after the call, we can keep heeding the call and we can actually bring change into Metro Detroit. By Monday, by Monday, on the DWO website, dwo.org, pastors will be able to sign up. If Lou would allow us, we'll put it on the call website. No one will have access to your information, but Lou and the call team, and then Detroit Wood Outreach, and Oakland, and Oakland Christian Church, Dominic Russo, it'll be on Dominic's site. Dominic, what's your website? Oaklandchristian.com, oaklandchristian.com. Mr. Mayor, can we use your website? Can you give it to him right quick? straightgate.com it'll be on straightgate.com it'll be on Oakland Christian it'll be on dwo.org it'll be on the call we're looking for 400 pastors somebody stretch your hand out and release faith for 400 pastors somebody say 400 the Lord told me I want 400 to make the change but I'll take a tithe as a start so we started out with 40 and then there was plus others that came in Jesus name but the Lord literally told me he literally told me I'm not trying to lose the profit but he triggered something in me when we met months ago. The Lord told me, he said, if you give me 400 and they will pray together, and they will pray in Detroit for Detroit, he said, I will give them the revelation that will restore the wisdom and the prosperity of the Israel revolution into the city of Detroit. He said, I will reign on this city in my glory. Isaiah 60 says, when the world is in its deepest darkness, then the glory of the Lord shall arise upon Zion and God will express himself in his manifold wisdom and magnificence. So there's some hand some, some hand bills around, but that don't get hung up on that. If you can hit, you know, Lou's website, our website, Dominic's website, in Jesus' name, we'd like to get these pastors together in the next couple of months, in Jesus' name, and, and go forward. Somebody say go forward. You say my name. Praise God. Let me get my wife. Stand with me. 